everyone's Jackal Wolf trying something a little bit different today. This is going to be my first D&D &D character creation video. Now, this is an idea I've kind of had in the back of my head for a little while. I've been playing D&D &D for about a year and a half with some online friends. Recently, I've also gotten to a local tabletop and I've been playing with my daughter quite a bit. So I'm really, really kind of getting into it. And I kind of feel like this would be kind of a cool thing to share online. I am putting this out on a brand new channel. So if you're not familiar with my modded Minecraft tutorials and Let's Plays, you can check me out on my regular channel. So I don't want to spend too long on the intro. So let's start talking about this character I want to create today. To keep things simple, I'm going to use the D&D Beyond Character Builder. It's a nice visual online resource, probably better than me trying to record myself scratching away at a piece of paper, flipping through a book. This is going to be a little bit more visual for you guys. Also, I'm using the Hero Forge custom miniature website to kind of give a visual representation of what I've got going on. If this video goes like I planned, these things are going to be going on side by side. But first off, let's set up a couple of parameters here. I'm going to keep most of this the same. There's not a whole lot I want to do here. Hit points, I'm definitely going to keep as fixed. I am going to use the point buy system for character creation. I do like the dice rolling, but by playing with the point buy, you kind of give yourself more of a flawed character. So the next stage, we got to pick our race. So we got two different variations here of the halfling. We've got the lightfoot halfling, which basically gives us the lucky trait, which allows us to reroll a d20 on any sort of nat one. And that means that the only way for us to actually get a nat one is to roll it twice in a row, which is very, very unlikely, though I have seen it happen to me personally in the past. We get the brave trait, which is you have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. The halfling nimbleness, which you can move through the space of any creature that is a size larger than yours. And then naturally stealthy, you can attempt to hide even when you are obscured only by a creature that is at least one size larger than you. Next option is the stout halfling. We've got the lucky trait again, the brave trait, the halfling nimbleness trait again, and then stout resistance. You have advantage on saving throws against poison and you have a resistance against poison damage. Both those options are very similar. The only real difference is extra chance to hide and extra chance against poison. So I'm going to pick the stout one for now. Moving on from there, we now get to choose a class. Now this character is actually going to be a monk. Now, I should probably mention the backstory for this character. In the past, Keenan wasn't known as Stonefist. In fact, he was a renowned painter known for the lifelikeness of his paintings. His fame grew to be so great that even the gods would come to him with commissions. But as his renown grew and grew, he became more arrogant and conceited about his works and would often boast that his creations were better than nature itself. And this started angering certain gods and goddesses of the realms that wanted to show him the errors of his ways. So as punishment for his hubris, his hands were cursed to be encased in stone. And while he could barely move his fingers, he lost his abilities for all fine motor skills that involved his hands, which completely ruined his painting ability. Lost and despondent, he started wandering the earth looking for somebody that could cure his curse. None were able to help him until he was finally on his last legs, completely humbled by his situation. When he finally met a martial arts master that determined that the only way to lift the curse was to find and confront evil wherever he found it. So whenever he uses his fists to defeat an evil creature, a small piece of stone would flake off, reducing the coverings over his hands. So to truly lift the curse, he would have to be in constant battle with the forces of evil, which is where we find him now wandering the world searching for evil to destroy. So because he doesn't have the manual dexterity to use tools, he certainly can't use any weapons. So being a master of unarmed combat is probably the best way for him to go. He's going to be a monk. That gives us unarmored defense on the first level. AC equals 10 plus your dexterity plus your wisdom modifier. So those are our two main things we're going to have to watch when we get to the stats page. Now he's also got martial arts at the level one. Basically this means we can use our dexterity instead of strength for attack and damage rolls. We also get to roll a d4 in place of the normal damage of an unarmed strike, which also goes up as we level up, which is really, really cool. We also end up getting multiple attacks right off the bat. So when we attack with an unarmed strike, we can use one other unarmed strike as a bonus action. So those are the first two first level items that we get. I'm going to bring this character up to level four. So we'll talk about some of the other attributes that we gain when we get to that point. So here we are on the level screen. I'm going to level up to level four. That means we get to pick our monastic tradition as well as our first ability score slash feat improvement. But first, what we got to do is we got to pick some proficiencies here. We get three choices at the first level. 
two monk skills, and then a musical instrument or artisan's tools. Now, this one's pretty simple from our backstory. I am actually going to pick the painter's supplies because he was a painter in the past. Even though he can't use them now, he still has those skills. He just physically can't control the paintbrush like he used to. And then as far as monk skills go, I'm thinking athletics would be good to pick. And then also insight. As an artist, he's always been trained to kind of look at the world around him and kind of see things as they are rather than as we think they are. Now we get our unarmored defense. This is, has to do with our AC. We already talked about that. As well as the martial arts, which we already kind of talked about previously. Starting at second level, your training allows you to harness the mystic energy of key. Your access to energy is represented by a number of key points. Your monk level determines the number of points you have as shown in the key points column on the monk table. So as a level four, we're going to have four key points. The cool thing about the key points is that we can spend them to do flurry of blows, which allows us two additional attacks. Patient defense, which is kind of like a dodge skill. And then step of the wind, which allows us to disengage or dash as a bonus action. All right, after that, we've got the unarmored movement. Starting at second level, your speed increases by 10 feet while you're not wearing armor or wielding a shield. Now, this is actually pretty good because as a halfling, our base movement is 25. So this automatically bumps us up to 35, which is better than the average character. So at the third level, we get our monastic tradition. With the player's handbook, which is the only one that I've got currently on D&D Beyond, we've got the Way of the Shadow, the Way of the Four Elements, and the Way of the Open Hand. Now, the Way of the Shadow is more like ninja -y, I guess. The Way of the Four Elements is kind of cool. It allows you to kind of harness, you know, the earth or fire or water, which would be a cool way to go with uh, Stone Fist. I'm going to stick with the Way of the Open Hand, though. To me, the stone fists are all about limiting Keenan. If he went the way of the four elements, to me, that would almost be like they're giving him a bonus, which I kind of feel would take away from his redemption story arc. Now, the way of the open hand gives us deflect missiles, which actually makes a little bit of sense. Starting at the third level, you can use a reaction to deflect or catch missiles when you're hit by a ranged weapon attack. So we may have to play this a little bit homebrewish. To me, the stone fists would definitely allow a deflection, but his manual dexterity or lack of manual dexterity wouldn't allow him to actually catch those arrows. But that would be a discussion between a DM and a player. And there is going to have to be a lot of homebrew to this character. We're going to get to that a little bit later on. I should have mentioned it earlier. I do plan on creating a custom weapon to mimic these stone fists, which is something else that we can do on D&D Beyond. So again, at the third level, though, we've got the open hand technique. Starting when you choose this tradition at third level, you can manipulate your energy's key when you harness your own. Whenever you hit a creature with one of the attacks granted by your flurry of blows, you can impose one of the following effects on the target. It must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or be knocked prone. It must make a strength saving throw. If it fails, you can push it up to 15 feet away from you, or it can't take reactions until the end of your next turn, which is kind of like a stunning blow, I guess. So that gets us up to the fourth level now. When you reach the fourth level, you can increase one ability score by two, or you can increase two ability scores by one, or you can take an optional feat as a bonus. Because we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit, we haven't even technically picked our stats yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward. We're going to use our point buys to get our stats, and then we're going to come back and choose probably an ability score improvement, maybe a feat. We're going to see how I feel. And then the last thing we get at the fourth level is the slow fall. Beginning at the fourth level, you can use reaction when you fall to reduce any falling damage you take by an amount equal to five times your monk level. So because we're fourth level, that would be five times four, which is 20. So if we were to take 12 fall damage, it would all get washed out. But if we were to take 24 fall damage, we'd end up taking four damage. All right, so next up is our ability scores. Score calculation, what we're going to do is the point buy. Now, the reason I'm picking point by is, like I said earlier, it's going to give me a flawed character. To me, standard array and point by makes you choose what you want to be good in. But making yourself good in something is going to make you bad in something else. Manual rolled is great if you're making a superhero character, somebody who's basically good at everything. So point by... I like to start with at least 10 and everything. I don't like having negatives. So we're going to bump our strength up to 10. We've already got 10 on our dexterity because we're a halfling. We've got nine on our constitution because we are the stout halfling. 
we're going to bump intelligence up, wisdom up, and charisma up. Now, wisdom and dexterity are my two ACs. So let's bump dexterity all the way up to 15 points. Actually, because we've got the bonus in dexterity, we can go down to 14. It still gives us a total of 16. Wisdom, we can go up to 14 again, which should give us a plus 2 to AC, plus a plus 3. So we're going to have a 15 AC right off the bat. Constitution is going to be good to have a little bit extra in. We'll bring ourselves up to 12 there. Actually, let's bring ourselves right up to 14. That's going to give us a big bonus on our hit points. And then strength, we'll bring that one up to 12. There's always going to be a chance we got to do some strength saving throws. Not so many intelligence saving throws out there, at least not many to worry about. We're not going to be a super charismatic person. We're kind of down on our luck, so I'm okay with the charisma being a little low. And then I do feel pretty good about these totals here. 16 on the dexterity, 14 on the wisdom are our two main ones. And then some good constitution for some good hit points. So that means we're going to jump back here. We're going to go back to our ability score. And again, we can choose a feat with a whole bunch of different things here. I really think though for this build, because it's our first chance to increase an ability, I'm actually going to go with the ability score improvement and we're going to bump two right into dexterity here. That means we've got a total of 18 in our dexterity and it's going to help us in our attacks and our initiative. So next up, this is a little bit of the flavor thing. We don't have to do much. I've already kind of talked about the character, but we probably should pick a background. Guild artisan, guild merchants, probably the closest to our backstory. So that gives us a skill proficiencies in persuasion. And why don't we pick, let's again do perception. We picked investigation once. We could probably do it one more time to get us some extra advantage there but we probably need to focus on perception as well. Again, because we're an artist, we got a very good eye for what's actually there. Tool proficiencies, we've already picked the painters. Probably maybe even calligrapher supplies, even though we can't use them because of the stone fists. I think that would probably make the most sense for our character. Now, as far as languages go, I believe we already speak halfling because the characters probably had at least a little bit of interaction with the gods and goddesses of the realm. I am actually going to pick celestial just as a secondary language to have. Guild membership's not going to mean a whole lot. It's going to be really up to your DM whether this applies or not. As for Keenan, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference because he's not a painter anymore. He's probably not going to be paying these guild dues. Suggested characteristics, personality trait, choose two. I'm well known for my work and I want to make sure everyone appreciates it. I'm always taken aback when people haven't heard of me. For sure, that makes sense. I'm a snob who looks down on those who can't appreciate fine art. Let's go throw that one in there as well. Ideals. Not a lot in here. Aspiration, I work hard to be the best there is at my craft. Whether that's going to be painting or martial arts, I could see that being a trait for Keenan. This one, okay, so bonds. I will get revenge on the evil forces that destroyed my place of business and ruined my livelihood. Similar, he destroyed himself by his hubris and he's going to go out and get revenge. He's going to go out and fight evil to regain his livelihood. So that's probably as close as any of these other ones go. As far as flaws go, these five or these six don't really, don't really make a lot of sense. I'm going to go with the, the six here. I'm horribly jealous of anyone who can outshine my handiwork. Everywhere I go, I'm surrounded by rivals. Without being able to use his hands, I'm sure Keenan is extremely jealous of anybody that could even just paint a stick figure right now. So we'll go add that one in there. Now, alignment is going to be interesting. Okay, here we go. Lawful neutral makes the most sense. Uh, individuals act in accordance with law, tradition, or personal codes. Many monks and some wizards are lawful neutral. Uh, faith and lifestyle. Lifestyle, we're going to go squalid. He is definitely squandered what little fortune he had. And there were physical characteristic, personality characteristics, notes in that. I'm going to leave all of that. That's more a little bit of a fluff. We've got our actual picture of Keenan to work off of. I don't think we need anything more than that. And then items or possessions. So we're going to start with equipment. Monk starting equipment, short sword, or any simple weapon. I'm just going to pick a simple weapon. And he certainly can't use any of these. So I'm just going to pick a club for the moment. 
And then probably an explorer's pack. Even though, again, he can't use a tinderbox. He can't use a mess kit. He can barely use his water skin, I'm sure. A lot of these things are really going to be outside of his ability to use. Set of artisan's tools. We will pick the painter's supplies. And then there's a bunch of other, you know, sort of fluff starting off here. All right, and that is it. Here is our character sheet. Now, if you're not familiar with the D&D Beyond character sheets, here's a good view of them. So yeah, we've got our dexterity is a plus four because we've got an 18 there. 31 hit points for level four. That is actually pretty good. Initiative a plus four. Armor is 16. I was thinking it was going to be 15. Oh, right. We went back and we added the extra two dexterity there. Then our unarmed strike plus six to hit. 1d4 plus four. As we go up in levels for monk, that 1d4 becomes a 1d6 and then becomes a 1d8. I think it actually goes all the way up to 1d12. And then we got all the other things that we kind of talked about. So that's really good for Keenan's character sheet. What I want to do is I want to spend a few minutes here. We're going to make ourselves a custom weapon for Keenan to have, which is going to mimic his stone fist curse. All right, so here we are in the homebrew creation area here. I've only played around with it for a little bit, so we're going to be doing a little bit of discovery here. So we're going to go create a magic item. All right, so it looks like it's actually going to be under wondrous items. We could probably find a gauntlet. Gauntlets of Ogre Power might be a good starting point. So we're going to create here. Yeah, so this is just a note saying that we're creating a copy of an existing item. So what we're going to do is call it Curse of the Stone Fist. Call it version one. Rarity uncommon, base type item, wondrous item. I guess that wondrous item is just a catch-all for everything. Requires attunement? Probably yes. But here we go. Modifiers. Set strength score. So let's add a modifier. I'm going to say it's going to be a damage type bludgeoning ability score to apply the modifier to. Don't think that's going to matter. Dice count, dice type. Fixed value, plus two. Actually, I probably don't have to put the plus in there. All right, we'll do that. Additional bonus types. Proficiency bonus. Don't know if that's what we needed to do. So we're going to call this additional damage from Stone Fist. Duration shouldn't matter. Let's go save that. We're going to add another modifier. This is going to be disadvantage on can we do dexterity ability checks so this should be our sleight of hand probably going to affect stealth which maybe it shouldn't dexterity skill throws are acrobatics sleight of hand and stealth to me sleight of hand and acrobatics definitely should be at disadvantage but it looks like I got to do those separately because stealth doesn't really have to do a whole lot with your fingers. So we're going to go athletics because generally we use athletics if you're climbing something. And if you can't properly grip like a ladder or a rope, you're going to be at a disadvantage for that. So we'll go disadvantage for manual dexterity checks. And we're going to copy that and save. And then we're going to do add a modifier, disadvantage, sleight of hand, disadvantage for manual dexterity checks, save. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the strength one because we don't actually need that. We're going to save changes. So let's go back over to Keenan. We're going to go to our inventory. We're going to add equipment. We're going to look for... Gauntlet. Hmm. We're going to look for curse. Did I not? We'll throw in magical. Here we go. It's right here up at the top. I don't think it's picking up on the damage though. All right. So this was broken for a little bit. I think I finally got it sorted out. Our disadvantage worked properly. It was our damage that we were having trouble with. If we jump in here, modifier type damage. I actually had to select, rather than bludgeoning, I had to select unarmed attacks. Fixed value two, that's perfect. That's just what we need. We're going to hit save. So unarmed strike right now, 1d4 plus four. 
we're going to go to our inventory. We're going to go add equipment. We're going to select that magical. Curse of the Stone Fist shows up right on top. We're going to add that item. We're going to go select it in our inventory. And then we're going to go attune it. You can see we got our disadvantage on our athletics. We got our disadvantage on our sleight of hand. We go back to our actions with the attacks. Unarmed Strike is now 1d4 plus 6. Same thing with the Flurry of Blows, which is absolutely perfect. And there you go. So we have created Keenan Stone Fist. It was a little bit longer of a video than I expected it to be. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to see some more of these. I got quite a few ideas for other characters. I would love to put them out there. Plus, at some point, I hope to actually have some D&D &D on this channel here. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye.